droids, yeah. All the BB-8. Um, so, I mean, our, we work for the creature effects department, and so we, we, we get involved in a lot of things in creature effects. And um, uh, so I, I basically, I do the electronics and software for the department. So anything that's got electronics in it has probably come across my desk at some point. Um, and some of the other things, like we, you know, we do a lot of animatronics. Um, so we've got Radis here and one of the calamaris. Um, with our lovely director there from uh, Rogue One, uh, Gareth, who's amazing. Um, Vistan, Space Monkey, as we Space called monkey. it. Yeah, Space Monkey. That was really good fun. That was actually filmed. That's when he's coming into land and he's, you know, going away on the guns. And it was filmed in a shipping container, which they pulled up on a crane. And I was in the back of the shipping container with the controls, and they're lowering it down like it's the ship coming in, you know, and they're filming out the window, so you see that kind of beautiful effect. So it's really nice to do lots of uh, in camera stuff. Uh, and it's Warwick Davies, he's in lots of our creatures, I think, isn't he? He's, he seems to get a few of them. I can't think which creature that is. Um, the head's off to the one side there. But uh, again, in Rogue One. And of course, there was another droid in Rogue One. Yeah, Josh? Uh, yeah, so I was asked to work on K2SO, so again, that was a bit of like, ooh, another semi-lead droid in a Star Wars movie, yes please. So um, what, uh, it was decided fairly early to do um, K2 as a performance capture, so Alan Tudyk was going to uh, voice and uh, performance capture on set uh, K2SO, uh, because it's the... Um, so the shape and size of K2 meant we couldn't really do it practically this time. But what they do need is, um, uh, it's, it's very hard sometimes for um, CGI to interact with real people. So if K2 had to <laughs> come and put his hand on someone's shoulder, just that interaction on the shoulder is, is really difficult. So um, what we were asked to do was <laughs> uh, make, a, uh, make some hands. So Alan would wear these hands and whatever he did, with his hands, K2's hands over here would copy it so that he could kind of interact. With so it. they were extended to the right length of K2SO. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then, but also we needed to get Alan uh, up to about seven foot two up in the air. So, and, and this was, you can just make out that um, he's on stilts there. And, and there, there was an idea that only a stunt performer could do that, but I was pretty sure that if we built the right kind of stilt, then Alan would be able to do every single shot, which he did actually. And we made them, they were all titanium and carbon fiber and, and quite high tech. They had a kind of robotic uh, heel that would uh, mimic what your heel did. And um, that meant that Alan could follow the actors everywhere and be in every shot. And also he could run in them in, uh, in the end, which I was really proud of. Didn't you use stuff from prosthetic, from amputees? To yeah, so the, the medical industry. Yeah, we used them um, for the foot. We use a, um, a prosthetic foot because it gives you lots of the technology that you need um, to make someone stable when they're up on stilts. So, really interesting project. Uh, and then, uh, so the other thing that we um, uh, look into all the time, so this is the sort of the engineering side of things, um, is we're always trying to make. Uh, creatures more lifelike and puppeteering easier so that you know, the more fluid it can be, the more organic it can be. And so this was a test we did for K2SO, the head. Um, and basically what I was trying to do on this was to add some new things into the way we perform uh, creatures. Um, so as to enhance, like I say, traditional puppeteering. So we could still pick up some joysticks and, and override and you know, puppeteer it normally. But we use procedural animation, which is kind of like a software algorithm to do certain things. And then auto animation, which could be just like the blinks or a breathe cycle just to keep the thing alive so the puppeteer doesn't have to do all that and think about it. And then this new thing, which was kinetic animation. And so basically, and the first thing I ever tried it on was the test head we made for K2SO when we thought it might be animatronic. So this head never got used, but it then sat on my desk and I used it um, as a, a demonstration piece to play with. And so this next bit of footage is of that head, um, and I'm just holding it on a stick, moving it around, but none of the, uh, the animation you're seeing on it is puppeteered. It's all based on kinetic and auto-animation procedures. Um, so the idea being that 
if you've got a performer wearing an animatronic head, uh, if they look down, the eyes will look down with them. And trying to get a puppeteer to do that is quite hard because they have to be really on it and know when he's going to move and how he's going to move. Also, also, sometimes we might have 30 characters all on set, all at the same time. You, you, the puppeteers might not be able to see them. So we were trying to come up with a way of uh, getting this sort of natural movement where when you turn your head, you blink, and that just happens automatically. Yeah, and we use this in Rogue One, this technology, and uh, we're, we're using it more now in uh, Solo. Some interesting, there's a really interesting character in Solo that utilizes this, but I can't really talk about it. So wait and see. Yep. Uh, so then we get into The Last Jedi. Um, this was early days, uh, as Ryan, and Ryan was just great to work with, um, possibly my most fun shoot I've ever worked on, I would say. Um, just because we were a bit more relaxed by then, weren't we? We knew what we were doing. Um, yeah, and also Ryan's just got that lovely, yeah. cool, relaxed vibe, isn't he? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And we built new stuff for, uh, for The Last Jedi, so we had to build some special rigs, so they come up with all these new ideas, what bb 8s got to do in the film, and um, Josh had to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> uh, so, I'll just, so I'll just list them and you can go through them. So uh, these are the, the, the four main ones, and then BB you can go fire back coins. to the top. <laughs> yeah. uh, so make BB-8 fire coins, and we had to put, BB, you know, every time um, there was any one of these rigs, we had a kind of special panel that would go into BB-8 that would do the job for us. Um, the, the, probably the hardest one on that list was the uh, head reattach, which was really odd. We we were shocked when we heard of you know BB head, head coming, coming off. off. It was like <laughs> must <laughs> not happen. We spent <laughs> so long <laughs> trying not to make that happen at Anaheim and places yeah. like that, and now they're putting it in the script. We're going to do what? <laughs> so, so um, and then I built this big fancy rig to uh, so that the ball would roll along. The head was on the ground over there, and then. Uh, puppeteer at the head would come over. But I'd kind of cheated and got the head up a bit like this. And then um, Ryan went, mm, you know, we really need the head to be fully over. So it was like, okay, give me an hour like this. And then and this is one of my coolest days on set because I completely reconfigured the rig, kind of made up new things and like, all under the pressure of knowing that it was going to shoot in an hour's time. And then it was my coolest moment really because we got the shot, worked perfectly. And then uh, Ryan just went to me, Nice rig, man. At the end of it, so I was, re I was really, really pleased with that. Really cool. Yep. So uh, yeah, lots of new things. He he had uh, he had a lot of action. He did have a lot of action sequences in this film. Yeah. And special effects did the coin fired, and we we embedded it in our thing. with special effects built the actual really? firing. Part That's correct. Of it. Uh, and then we had some new droids as well. <coughs> so we had uh, two new rebel droids. BB, BB4 and 2 BB2, which on set were known to us as BBC1 and BBC2, which are our first main, our main channel, our TV channels in the UK, our BBC1 and BBC2. And BBC2 was blue, so it rhymed with that, and the other one was BBC1. Which doesn't rhyme. Which doesn't rhyme, but yeah, that's the, what they called. So the first AD came up with those names, so they like to have nicknames on set. Uh, and of course there was one other one. BB8. Uh, BB8. <laughs> Uh, which we all called it, again, they didn't really like us calling it BB-8, so <laughs> they came up with BB-9E, um, but you know, it's, uh, it's our BB-9E, BB which is a great droid and a tricky thing to make because it's got grills on it. Yeah. How can you make a rolling droid harder? Put lots of holes in it. And make it gloss black. Yeah, I'll make it gloss black, yeah, yeah. So, because it picks up all the dirt. Picks up, picks up the dirt and reflects the entire camera crew in it. <laughs> it's, a sphere, it's a reflective sphere. And then you get on and they go, oh, hang on a minute, we can see everybody in it. Oh, no. So, yeah, that was, that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, this is in my electronics porter camera. It's very glamorous. Uh, and we've, <laughs> we've got uh, the guy in the red cap is Jake Lunt. So he was uh, the guy that's fleshed out all those designs for BB-8 and these droids. Then we've got our uh, glorious leader, Neil Scanlon, in the middle there, crouched down. And then behind him, Josh. And we're literally just looking at uh, BBC-1 with BBC-2's head on here, mm -hmm. just uh, doing some testing. So, yeah, Neil would be sort of saying, oh, I think we need the, the eye bigger and over to the left. We're sort of masking tape bits on just to uh, see how it's going to look, and then it all becomes finalised later. We just kind of sketch it in, really. Yep. 
Uh, oh yeah, so we're going to talk about what our day is like. It's very interesting. Alarm goes off, drive to work. <laughs> <laughs> but they, so they, they um, on, at Pinewood they have like a lot of you know <coughs> stages, and so it might be say two days per stage. It's quite unusual if you're in one stage for a week, so you have to be very mobile. And some, sometimes the filming will change stages midday, and you get this sort of gypsy caravan of technicians pushing all their equipment from stage to stage. So here's our little BB-8 camp. We have a really old van, which is really beaten up. It's not road legal anymore. It's kind of embarrassing to pull BB-8 out of the back of it, because um, one BB-8 is probably worth about 10 of those vans, right, at least. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but anyway, they all go into this van and we trundle it around the studio, and in that shot from left to right, you've got the puppet, and then in front there is the um, uh, red carpet, which we used in uh, the last year. Behind that is the wiggler, and then you've got the two trikes to the right there. And so what will happen is the director will uh, come up with a shot, and then uh, probably block it out with the actors, and then they'll call, on, call us in, and we'll sort of decide with the director, with the first AD, which BB-8 we're going to use. So we don't really know, actually, so we have them all ready like a little menu of BBAs and you can just choose and that one gets taken on set and does the shot. Well guys, we are running out of time. So while we go through the rest of this, I just want to let you guys know we're going to open up for a few audience questions. There's a mic there and a mic there and we'll alternate. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and line up and we'll get to them in a moment. Uh, so yeah, a bit of preparation, um, just screwing panels in. There's another massive panel missing in this photo, I've only just noticed. <laughs> So Sorry. we're not in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> Moving Sorry. on. So Josh has just given a bit of motivational speech here to BB-8 before he goes on and does his thing. Be uh, cute. Yeah. Don't do it again. Yep. Um, and then what we've got is a bit of diagnostics. We quite often things go wrong. We have to fix them more, uh, whilst we're going, which is always interesting. And they don't always get fixed. We're looking very calm there. <laughs> oh, and that little, so the little white one on the right-hand side is what we use for our lighting stand-in. So uh, all actors have a stand-in who stands in place for them whilst they set the lights up, because they don't want to stand there. So, and that's the BB-8 lighting stand-in, because he doesn't want to stand there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so then there's just a bit of touch on what the new performance technology. So this was mentioned earlier on about how we are uh, moving forward and trying to make things um, uh, more, uh, better performance, basically, without puppeteering. And so one of those things we use is face tracking, and this was actually from five years ago, and it was a little test we did on a basic animatronic. It's just the top half of the animatronic head, so it's quite hard to see what it's doing. But it was the blinks, just the blinks alone were one of some of the best eye blinks we'd ever seen, because it's driven by real, by my eye blinks, and you can't really beat that. And the, the eyes twitch about quite a lot, and it really picked up that in the oh, system. Eyebrow. Yeah, I couldn't do the Roger Moore thing, so I had to <laughs> physically push my one eyebrow up and down. Um, and then more recently, uh, we are getting into body motion capture, can't say what for, um, but rather than using cameras, I, I dress up like I'm in an 80s tennis match. Um, and, but it's, it's looking really nice, you know, it's some stuff in there that's kind of just very natural, which would be very hard to perform. Yeah, and we, can, and we can sort of have one person Control, controlling all those moves, whereas normally that would take maybe four, five puppeteers, all with lots of rehearsal coordination, so you get a very natural movement. And then we've got the family, family album. Family album. Yep. <laughs> so after every, when we, when we, yeah, exactly, it's the team, the team family of uh, droids. But so at the end of, uh, towards the end of the film, everything goes for scanning. So they go and scan all the models, they photograph them. They 3D scan them, and during that time, they take a photograph of you with the, whatever the creature is or the droid. So these are some of our scanning family photos. Um, we look really sad and visual because it's... We're quite long. tired <laughs> by this point. It's been a long, but, long shoot. Just bear in mind, this is five years in at this point. Um, so BBC One and BBC Two. I look really fed up in that one with uh, BB Hate. Hate. And then uh, we love them really. We do. I know. And uh, there's our full BB-8 family there. So there's Dave, myself, uh, Josh, and Brian. And that was a year in, so we looked much more chipper. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave and Brian are uh, kneeling down there, the puppeteers. Yeah. 
Um, uh, and then we finish with that one, which is our uh, I mean, incred incredibly privileged to get into Vanity Fair. We've never saw that coming. Annie Leibovitz. Uh, and we obviously with Anthony Daniel Daniels. And the other guy who sat behind Josh there is uh, Lee Towersy, who looks after R2D2. So. Wow. Well, thanks, guys. Let's go for some audience questions. Let's start over yep. here. Um, what's the trike 